As we continue here in lesson two, applying properties of rational exponents, we're actually going to work with some rational exponents now. So we're asked to simplify a couple of expressions involving variables and rational exponents. Well, if you remember back to our first time we looked at exponents and their properties, we might have run into something that looked like this, x to the fifth times x squared. Well, the rule back then was that if I had the same base of two powers and I was multiplying those powers together, it was a matter of adding their exponents. So that would equal x to the seventh. Another rule we had is that if we had a power raised to another power, the power of a power property, we took those exponents and multiplied them together, 2 times 3 happening to be 6. Uh, other properties we had, if we, we had the quotient of powers property, or if I had x to the fifth over x squared, let's say, I would subtract those exponents, thinking about canceling, so in that case that would be x cubed. Uh, and if I had the power of a product property, or something in parentheses, two things multiplied together, raised to another power, that exponent applied to both parts, is like, kind of like distributing it to each part of the expression. So that would turn into x cubed, and this would become y to the sixth, because I'd be multiplying those exponents together. So using those same ideas, we're going to work with some rational exponents. So we'll just kind of put a box around this at the moment, and save it. And we're going to look at n to the 5 fourth times n to the 1 half times n. Well, if you'll notice, this one is n to the first. Let's add a little exponent just to make sure. Same base. We're going to go ahead and add their powers together. So that means we're going to need to take 5 fourths plus 1 half plus 1. Now, if you remember adding fractions, in order to add fractions, you have to add common denominators. In this case, your common denominator would be a 4, because that's the least common multiple of the denominators. To change 1 half into a number of fourths, I would multiply by 2 over 2, and that would become 2 fourths. And to change 1 into a number of fourths, I'd multiply it by 4 over 4, which is 4 fourths. So I'm going to have 5 fourths plus 2 fourths plus 4 fourths. And then once I have the same denominator, I add the numerators together. 5 plus 2 is 7, plus 4 is 11. So this is going to be 11 fourths when we're all done with it which means that the answer to this simplified expression is n raised to that power, n to the 11 fourths power. There we go. The next thing that we do is we're going to, <coughs> excuse me, simplify an expression that's got a couple of powers raised to another power. Now you could go about this in two different ways. I would recommend, because I have the same base for both of the powers within parentheses, that I focus on that expression first. Same base means we can add the exponent. So once again, i got to do a little bit of fraction addition. I'm going to take 3 halves plus 3 fourths. Again, to change this into a number of fourths, I would have to multiply by 2 over 2. That would make it 6 fourths. So I have 6 fourths plus 3 fourths. Well, that's going to equal 9 fourths. So x to the 9 fourths is what I've got inside of parentheses. Now, x to the 9 fourths is still raised to the... 4 thirds power. Let's put a 4 thirds out here. And now, in order to simplify a power raised to another power, I have to multiply the exponents together. So, to multiply fractions, I'll write this over to the side, we're going to take 9 fourths times 4 thirds. And when you multiply fractions, you don't have to worry about getting a common denominator. In that case, it's simply taking the top times the top over bottom times the bottom. So you could take 9 times 4 and get 36 over 4 times 3, which is 12. Or you could simplify on the way. Uh, maybe learn this trick in grade school. If I see a 4 here and a 4 here, I could cancel that because 4 divided by 4 is going to be 1. And here I could cancel a little bit because 9 divided by 3 is going to be 3. So once I've simplified, then I go ahead and multiply. 3 times 1 is 3. 1 times 1 is 1. So 3 over 1 is going to be just 3. So when I'm done multiplying these two exponents together, I'm going to have x to the, multiplying these gave me 3, so x cubed is going to be my answer. And that's doing a couple of simplification problems involving rational exponents.